The mayor of Kyiv had a message for anyone wishing to return to the city. Quote, the risk of dying is pretty high, adding that big battles are being fought around Ukraine's capital. It comes after Russia said it would scale back attacks in the area earlier this week. For more from the ground, I want to bring in Sergei Stakovsky, the former professional tennis player from Ukraine. He famously beat Roger Federer at Wimbledon, but he put down his tennis racket to defend his country when the war began over a month ago. Uh, it is good to see you again. I wish it was on uh, a, a better evening, but here we are. What can you tell us about the fight near Kyiv? Well, the fight was intense, but it's starting to move away from Kyiv uh, slightly. The Ukrainian forces have been able to clear a couple of cities which are borderlining with Kyiv, uh, such as Irpin, uh, uh, Bucha a little bit. Uh, those cities are completely torched. There's nothing left uh, from the residential part. Um, I would say the situation in Kyiv is getting better. Uh, in terms of uh, people actually are coming in back because I think they, you know, the, the resource that they have uh, that they had to move away and to live in a different city just drained and they had to come back because there was not other way. Um, I think that you know Ukrainian army now is going to be regrouping as well because Russians are pulling up towards the Chernobyl area and uh, and Belarus, and most likely you know they will try to shift their attention to Kharkiv and and press more in terms of trying now to split the Ukraine in half because the, the whole occupation of Ukraine didn't really work for them so far. The last time you and I spoke, you said you had only had a short lesson on how to use a rocket launcher. What have you done since then? Have you been involved in any fighting? I think it's a good part that I haven't. Uh, I didn't have the let's say orders to go up but uh we were doing some humanitarian parts uh just near the front line uh and uh and say intensive um and law yes we get now uh say not theoretic lessons on the end systems um i still had a couple of uh, i had a shooting range practice with a assault rifle so uh as it is now i just hope that you know i will not have to use it because they are pulling up from here but we don't know what the situation is going to involve whether there are going to be some drastic changes in the situation right now your father and brother were with you in kiev working as medics at the hospital are you all still together uh, my brother is still here. My father moved away because uh, he, he moved out. He moved to uh, Czech Republic uh, because where we were staying, uh, it was a direct threat of artillery, let's put it that way. One time or another, it was almost impossible to sleep because the bombs were exploding every, let's say, five, six, seven minutes. So he decided to take um, his nephew and uh, two, uh, two sons of her. So, uh, out of Ukraine, and for a while he's been in my, was my mother in a week. It's been a week. We talk a lot oh, about what like this is. Chose. We talk a lot about what this is like for women and children who have been forced to flee, but it's also difficult for husbands and fathers like you who are left behind fighting. What is it like for you to be away from your wife and children? Well, I think it's slightly brutal. Uh, it is not something that uh, I would wish anyone to experience. Um, but there's a lot of fathers uh, and wives who uh, who left someone behind or who sent someone away and stayed behind. Uh, I think it's about 50 percent of the, of the military personnel uh, in Ukraine has a family, has a kids who they left, whether it's a father or a mother is fighting. So. I'm nothing, uh, you know, out of ordinary. It's just the, the 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 level of willingness of people to defend their country is just so great that you know everybody's willing to risk their life. I'm not saying that it's you know uh, it's a heroic. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people who died, and those families will never see their fathers or mothers or, or brothers. And uh, that is something that you know in in a modern world should never should never happen in the first place. And we should all think about that in the first place. Last week, I know you posted a video calling out Russian athletes who participated in that rally that was staged by Putin. Why was it an important thing for you to do? Uh, 
well, for me, always, you know, that sports is, uh, is not politics. Uh, there's no politics in sport and it should not get mixed. Uh, that's always the message we hear from all the leaders and especially from Russia lately. And that just proves us, you know, how much sport is connected to the politic, how political figures are trying to get behind, get support from the sports figures and promote themselves through the sport and their needs and their, and their deeds, actually. And for me, it was just outrageous that you had Olympic champions and medalists standing on a, on, a, on a stage promoting the war in Ukraine, promoting the invasion of Russia into Ukraine. And it's just, it's bizarre. It, it should never be. I mean, we've seen this, unfortunately, by history, but that was about 80 years ago. And it was uh, Hitler's Germany. And this is, if we are going that way, then the world should brace in because, you know, Ukraine is just the beginning.